The Black Eyed Children, so much more than just an urban legend. Today, we will be recounting five terrifying encounters with them. If you enjoy the video, remember to leave a comment or rating as it really helps me out. And at the end of the video, we will be revealing the winning suggestion from last video, so be sure to stick around. But for now, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. My girlfriend and I live in a small gated community in southwestern Virginia. The community has about 150 houses, a country club, and a steakhouse bar called Bunkers. Now anyone can come through the gate during the business hours of Bunkers, but after they close, the front security gate stops all traffic to make sure that you're a resident, and if you're not, they'll call the person's house just to make sure. Sometimes it's a hassle, but hey, you don't have to worry about a robbery. So imagine my surprise when my doorbell chimed at 3am. I was jarred awake and wasn't sure if it was just a dream, considering that I just went to bed shortly before and was probably just about to go into REM sleep. I rolled over and looked at the clock, noticing the time, and then my doorbell chimed again. I felt a cold chill run through my body, not reading too much into it. It could have been one of my neighbours, they might have had an emergency. So I nonchalantly made my way to the door. Now I see how foolish I really was. I opened it, and luckily the wrought iron storm door was still locked, because who or what was before me was not a resident of the community. Two young boys stood at the doorstep, one looking to be about 17, and another looking to be about 10, wearing dark hooded sweatshirts and jeans. The young one had snaggy blonde hair, and would only look down at the doorstep, and the older one had his hood pulled up to the tip of his head where I could only see him from half of his nose down. My voice caught in my throat. And before I could even ask what they wanted, the older one spoke. His voice sounded forced and dry. There was no emotion or sincerity to what he said. I'm sorry to bother you and your girlfriend, but we need to come in and use your phone. There has been an accident. I felt the familiar chill return to my whole body. How did he know my girlfriend was here? I wrote it off as there were two cars in the driveway, and I figured that he just assumed. I tripped over my words. Something about these kids just wasn't right, it wasn't normal, wasn't human. Um, uh, I can bring you my cell phone if you want to make a call. I don't get much service inside, so you have to stand on the sidewalk to call. I said finally, quite nervously. Of course, I was lying through my clenched teeth. I did not want these kids in my house. Well, my brother really needs to use your bathroom cane. We have to come in. The older one said that, and that's when I went into a complete panic. How did he know my name? I'm, I'm sorry, are you from here? How did you know my name, I said. That's when he became slightly hostile, and demanded to be let inside. But I told them that I was sorry, and couldn't help them, and was just about to close the main door when it happened. They both snapped their heads back upwards and looked at me straight in the eyes. Black. No iris. No pupil. No retina. Just pure, deep black. I was paralysed with fear. For a second I thought those kids were just playing a really cruel joke, and had snuck into the community somehow, and bought some of those freaky supernatural demon sclera contacts. That was until I heard a ringing noise. It was a flashback. I was suddenly a toddler again and at my grandparents house sitting under the chestnut tree, with my mother picking up the nuts and putting them in a large soup kettle. It was a crisp day, 
It was one of my earliest and dearest memories. I was about three at the time, and even have a picture. But then, they were there. Behind my mother we locked eyes. Their eyes still as black as night. And suddenly they both smiled simultaneously. And that's when everything went dark. The next thing I knew I was being shaken awake. What the hell, Kane? my girlfriend said. I didn't know how to answer her. I was lying in our living room. My head had taken a good whack against the slate floor, and a bit of dried blood was stuck to my hair. But other than that, I was physically fine. I slowly remembered everything that had happened, and looked at the door. Daylight. I've never been so happy to see morning in all my life. I told my girlfriend everything that happened and honestly think she must have thought I had brain damage from hitting the floor. But she insisted that she believed me. I don't want to dwell on this, but I seriously have no idea what happened the rest of that night. I had one encounter that happened to me last summer whilst I was driving a semi over the road. I'd just pulled into a truck stop beside Billing, Montana. I fueled up, parked the truck in the back of the lot, and then went inside and showered, etc. Come nightfall, I ran out of movies to watch in my truck, and I had a 34 hour wait before I could legally drive again. So I decided to go inside the casino that was inside the truck stop. I was playing slots and a beautiful American Indian girl was serving drinks. After a few drinks, I started chatting with her on a more personal level. She told me that her shift ended in a few hours, and that she would be behind the truck stop with a case of beers, in case I wanted to party after, which I did. I hung around the front of the building, and when everyone started filing out the doors, I went around back to meet her, but I couldn't find her. I did find an old Mexican woman who seemed to know my name, and acted as if I had just been talking to her inside. I was buzzed, but not drunk nor stupid. I knew this wasn't the same person. What also struck me as odd, was that she had no personal belongings beside the clothes on her back. No purse, no keys, nothing. I started to feel a little tripped out because of this. I began to act like I didn't know her, and didn't want to have anything to do with her. She became cold quickly and stopped talking to me. Okay, well that was freaking weird. And here's the totally screwed part. I walked all the way back out to my truck and climbed in the back. I changed into my sleepwear and laid on the bunk to reread a book. Only a few minutes into the book, I hear three loud bangs on the side of my sleeper. I opened the curtains and rolled down the window and saw the young American Indian woman who I'd been speaking to was standing next to my truck. I immediately picked up that something was wrong about her. It wasn't her lack of speech, odd dishevelled looks or rigid body movements. It was her eyes that got to me. Solid black. I could say that the dark night, coupled with a few drinks, could make me think her eyes were black. But I'm not. When I hit a switch in the back of my truck, the inside lights up like a baseball stadium. Her eyes seemed to be pulling the light into them, like miniature black holes. It reminded me of when a woman is wearing mascara and cries, and she kind of looks like a raccoon. It looked like she had rubbed charcoal around her eyes. It also felt like my body was acting of its own accord. My body was screaming at my fragile psyche to open the door and let her into my truck despite the fact that she looked freaking terrifying and hadn't said a single word to me since meeting her again. I remember having to choke out the word no. It reminded me of when you're on the verge of tears 
but you choke through them to speak to someone. That's how the word no felt when it was passing my lips. I was too damn terrified to look out my side vent to see if she was still standing outside. I was too terrified that I might have ended up looking back into the dark abyss, only to know in my mind's eye that she could be staring right back at me. About midnight a few days ago, I was simply relaxing at home watching a few DVDs before heading to bed. When I was interrupted by a knock at the door, as I normally do, I attempted to switch on the outdoor patio light which, conveniently, blew up as I flickered the switch. Nevertheless, I opened the door. There were two kids at the door. Both looked as they were about 12 or 13. The first one, which decided to stand back off the porch, was short and wore a plain red t-shirt and cargo shorts. I couldn't see much of him to be honest, so I couldn't say much about what he looked like. The second, who I assumed knocked on the door, was slightly taller than the first kid and he wore a plain green t-shirt and also cargo shorts. He had medium length curly black hair, sitting under a plain green baseball cap. Due to the conveniently blown bulb, I also couldn't see him clearly as well. This was compounded by the fact that the street lights on my street were out. This was a big red flag. So I opened the door and asked them what they wanted. The first kid answered, Good day mate, we were wondering if we could just come in and get our kitten out of your backyard. Now, three things were odd about this immediately. I've never had a 13 year old kid come up to me and say good day mate as a greeting. Usually it's hi or hey. Never good day mate. It was like he was trying to be extremely stereotypical. Also, his accent was weird for here in Australia, and it appeared as if he was putting it on. And when I was 13, I wasn't actually going around on weekdays at midnight. I don't know about the rest of you though. Now, considering the three points I just mentioned, I was kind of taken aback by the odd request. I said, okay, I can get it for you. To which the first one replied, no mate, we insist that we need to come and get her. She's really scared of strangers. Again, this was unusual. He called me mate again, and his claim about the cat didn't really seem valid. Now this time, I actually considered letting them in, but the weirdness factor actually overcame that. I asked him, how old are you buddy? To which the one at the back replied, and I must say very enthusiastically, 16? He too had the same weird accent. I said, you don't look 16. And the kid closest to the door started becoming a bit more tense and changed the subject back. Look mate, we really need to come in and get our kitten. I was a bit shocked now as his friendly tone had turned a bit more hostile. I said, look kid, if you're going to be rude, you won't be getting your kitten back. He apologized. Sorry mate. But please, we really need to get our cat. The other chimed in, please let us in. Now I was becoming very suspicious of their intentions. A lot of stuff had been happening here in Australia lately, like assaults and home burglaries, where adults had been bashed by kids. It had become more frequent in my area. So naturally, my next instinct was to see, subtly, if I could spot any concealed weapons. What happened next actually shocked me. The first kid said, We don't have any weapons on us. Dumbfounded, I almost responded with, How did you know what I was thinking? But changed the subject to avoid them becoming more suspicious. What I actually said was, Does your mother know that you're out so late? He just replied, Come on mate, just let us in. Our mother will get angry if we don't come home with the kitten. But by this time I'd had enough. I said, tell you what, give me your phone number and I will call your mum back tomorrow if I find the kitten. 
and I'll even bring it back for you. I almost again opened the door to give them a pen and paper. There was paper and pen near the front door by the table, so I didn't need to leave the room. And as I moved my hand to open the door, the kid stepped right up to the door. This is where it turned unusually creepy. He had a really strange grin on his face, and I could have sworn his eyes were completely black. When I saw them, I immediately jerked back from the door. I said, okay, you need to get off my front door now. He answered, we're just kids, mate. Let us get our kitten. Leave now or I'm calling the cops. Both the kids simply stared at me to the point that I was really freaked out and had the sneaking suspicion they wanted to do something to me. To show them I was serious, I turned back and grabbed my mobile phone with the intention of making it look like I was serious about making a call to the cops. But when I turned back, they were gone. Just like that. I looked around and couldn't see them. So I shut the door. I did have a bit of a desire to go see where they really went though. But I also had a really bad feeling about the events that just occurred. The whole thing lasted about two and a half minutes. But it was the most bizarre thing that has ever happened to me. This incident took place about 13 years ago. I had just moved into a new city with my wife. We were small town newlyweds from the Midwest, and we moved cross country to one of the bigger cities in the Southwest so that we could attend graduate school. Being naive and new to city living, I habitually answered the door without a second thought. However, this never happened again after this encounter. The first thing that should have tipped me off to the peculiarity of this situation was the fact that someone was knocking at six in the morning. The second thing that should have dawned on me is this kid had to reach over a rather tall patio gate to unlatch and open it. The knock at the door was startling. My wife and I were getting ready for work, a pretty normal routine. The moment I opened the door, I was overtaken by an inexplicable sense of fear. To this day, I could still picture him. Teenager, average height, average build, knee-length black leather coat, short black hair, and sunglasses. The sunglasses at 6am struck me as odd. Even more odd, he was eating an apple. He was very polite and asked if he could come in to warm up. I said no and I closed the door on him and secured the chain in place. But a moment later came another knock. I opened the now chained door and before I could speak he asked again if he could come in to warm up. No, I replied and attempted to close the door. Before the door could shut, he put his hand out, stopping the door on its hinges. He looked directly into my eyes, still wearing his sunglasses, and said, Can I at least get some ketchup for my apple? What? I replied. I was a little bit confused. Get the hell out of here. My wife is calling the police. He takes a moment to let this information sink in, and he lowers his sunglasses revealing his eyes, black as obsidian, and says, no, you will not be calling anyone. At that moment, I force the door closed and lock it and call out to my wife. She is scared, shitless, hiding in the bedroom, all jacked up on adrenaline. I rip the curtain back and look out the window next to the door. He's gone. Absolutely no trace of him. I go out on the patio and check the gate. It's still latched from the inside. What the hell? I think to myself and turn to enter the house. When I notice a half-eaten apple lying on the ground.
I was over at my aunt's house, waiting for her to get home so that she could give me a lift to my house. Whilst I was waiting, my little cousin came home with his dad, and he asked if I could just watch him until he got back from the shop. So we sat on the couch together and started watching TV. My cousin was zoned out and wasn't really paying attention to me, which was weird because he's one of those little kids who loves to talk despite the television being turned on. As the TV's going on, I hear his dad pull out of the driveway, but I didn't hear him drive away. Not five minutes later, there's a knock at the door. I assume it's him, so I look out the window, but the TV is in the way, so I can't really make out who's outside. I listen for a moment, waiting for the person behind the door to say something. I know it couldn't be my uncle or auntie as they have their own keys, and it's not my house so I didn't really want to open their door. I wait but no one says anything, so I just leave it. It was quiet for a few minutes, so I focus my attention back on the TV. My cousin, bless him, has fallen asleep in the corner. That's fine, I think. He'll be easier to manage. And that's when I hear a knock on the window. I really wasn't expecting it and it made me jump. I yelled out, who is it? And they just replied, it's me. I couldn't tell who it was, but relaxed, thinking it must be someone familiar. I went to the door and opened it. And there were two kids one taller than the other, and they were both keeping their heads down. They were both wearing oversized hoodies and jeans. I was a bit confused at first. Why were their heads down? My cousin was still very young, so these kids were not his friends asking him to come play. I looked at them and asked them what they wanted. They asked if they could come in. They sounded nervous and scared at first, which to me explained why their heads were down. I said no, and that's when they both lifted up their heads and I saw their eyes, which were all black. I was taken aback, but wasn't that scared as there was a locked screen door between us. Then they both said in unison, I need to call my mum. It was like something out of a corny, scary movie. They weren't smiling beforehand, but now their faces looked quite annoyed. The smaller one of the two said, Please, we just need to come in. Just say we can come in. I was quite scared of these kids, and that's when I see the elder of the two trying to unlock it. I grabbed the screen lock, but my hand felt frozen. I have absolutely no idea what came over me. It felt like something was messing with my hands. I was absolutely in shock. I couldn't even twist the locks, and I kept trying for what seemed like forever, but there was just something wrong. In fear, I ran to the couch where my cousin was. I was just ready for these kids to bust in and was preparing to fight. I didn't know what else to do and I didn't think to call anyone. But nothing happened. No noise came from the screen door, and it was just quiet in the house now apart from the background noise of the TV. For the next few minutes I just stood there behind the couch, waiting and listening. I saw and heard nothing though. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't. And then finally, my aunt showed up and as soon as she walked into the door, my cousin woke up and ran over to her. I stayed over at my aunt's in the morning and everything was back to normal. My cousin didn't even remember anything. He must have been pretty passed out. I didn't know who to tell about this, it was so creepy. I wanted to tell my auntie but it just sounded so far-fetched in my mind. I couldn't bring myself to reveal it. I have no idea who they were or of their intentions. But I'm so glad that they never managed to get in. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. 
And the next video will be... Uber Horror Stories. Thank you to Death the Kid for your suggestion. Submit your suggestion in the comment section below to have your pick next time. And if you like the video, why not subscribe to keep up to date with my new content? Because you never know, it might be just what you were asking for. You can also follow me on my various social medias in the description. But for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.